is Retro Reviews here again with another video review, and this time I'm going ahead and taking a look at uh, the master grade of the Gundam Death Scythe version EW from Gundam Wing. Uh, more specifically, Katoki's redesign of the Death Scythe. So this is not how he appears in the cartoon, but this is how uh, Katoki, uh, Hajime Katoki has uh, redesigned him for the Endless Waltz designs. So, yeah, this doesn't show up in any animation, but it's the only version of the Death Scythe that we have. I doubt we'll ever see an Okawara design of the um, other main four seed character, or um, not seed, but uh, wing characters, because Okawara TV show Wing wasn't released until like, or wasn't was released back in 2010, and almost 2016 now and we're just now getting uh, Ultron so or it's not 2016 but it's close but yeah you get the idea so we have Ultron and coming out and so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at Death Scythe here one of my favorite pilots of any Gundam series duo Maxwell and this is his uh, mobile suit so we can go ahead and take a look at it uh, some of the details Take a look at the head here as soon as we can focus. Very nice head. I do like the way his head looks with the uh, yellow vents coming off of the side and the uh, cre the different colored crest with the V-fin. You can see in there. Uh, there we go. Clear green on the head camera. Well, it's clear plastic, but I painted it green. Same with the um, this little window piece down here. So, and the eyes, I also did that with the clear green. It was originally clear. I might have to go in there and redo it because it's such a small... But then again, it's such a small area because it's a smaller uh, suit. It doesn't show up as well. So, yeah. Overall, some nice, nice details going in. The, um, the main difference with the suit design is the knee pads and these spikes coming up off the top off the feet off the toes so that's the biggest difference between that and uh, the shoulder pads are di a bit different the, sh um, the head is actually black on the uh, TV show version of the death scythe so uh, but overall um, Construction wise, it's pretty much the same. We do there is a uh, different kind of thrusters going on in the actual Shoulders on the TV version, but other than that it is uh, quite all right Go ahead and take a look inside the cockpit here fairly easy cockpit to hatch to open up and We can see in there nice little duo Maxwell sitting in there. Maybe Yep uh, Hang on a second. Let me grab the LED real quick So, do, do, do. yep, there you go. You see a nice little figure of duo duo sitting in there, kind of just hiding in there. It's kind of hard to actually get the light in there, but once you get that, yep, there we go. There he is, fully realized in unpainted plastic. So, once again, haven't gotten around to painting any of the. Pilots. I should start working on that. I've gotten almost 30 of these master grades now. I should probably start at some point. Anyways, posability. It's fairly similar to the uh, Wing Zero, uh, Proto Zero that I showed off. They share the same, pretty much the same exact inner frame. So, head is on a ball joint at the top of the neck, and then a forward and back swivel at the base. The shoulders can come out, but uh, the connection for the Death Scythe shoulders is a little weak, so it, it's easy to pop out. But yeah, it can come out from the body, and it can rotate. You get the shoulder armor out of the way, and it can really rotate. Shoulder armor is pieced together, so it should 
uh, in a way where it, you'd think it would have individual articulation, but it doesn't. But your shoulder could come out about this far, go this far forward, or go 360 degrees, as long as you keep it out of the way of the backpack. Elbows, fairly decent bend, not quite 180 degrees, but fa uh, close enough. We've got a ball joint on the wrist, which if you pull the ball joint back, it does kind of pull this piece down. So that way it keeps like the area in between the arm and the wrist flowing instead of just a big gaping hole. And we have the swappable finger style hands, which you'll see a lot of with these next uh, Master Grade reviews that I'll be posting. And this back skirt armor just decided to pop off and I can't get it to go back on. There we go. So yeah, the thumb is individually articulated and then the fingers will be swapped out. We'll show them off later. Torso, we do have a ball joint in the middle torso as well as a ball joint at the lower torso for the waist so you can rotate hip skirts front skirts can go out about that far side skirts go out about that far and the back skirt goes out about that far and nice forward and backwards movement there's no um variable hip system so this is just a universal joint as a hip to go forward, backwards, and out to the side. And then it also does have a thigh swivel, which also I forgot to mention, he does have a bicep swivel as well. And the knees, bend the knees, a nice, good double jointed knee to pull off the uh, almost 180 degree bend. And as you, could see, as you saw, the uh, armor separates a little bit for that, for that knee pad. So that's pretty nice. Uh, the ankles, I do believe it's just a... Really? Lots of parts wanting to fall off. Hang on a second. Now why doesn't this want to stay in? Meh. Oh well. We'll worry about that later. But um... Yeah, all the okay. There's double ball jointed ankles, one at the top, one at the bottom. So it does rock all the way around like that. And then we do have another ball joint at the foot. So one at the top of the ankle, one at the bottom, of course. And there's that. And then the toe, the lay, the foot can't really move. But then this little piece for the toe can actually bend forward and back a little bit. So that's pretty nice. So yeah, fairly decent amount of articulation going on in this. Uh, granted for its size it it's not bad so there's that uh, real quick size comparison time get him stood up straight get him over here and bring out the original Gundam as you can see this scythe is a little bit shorter uh, but the tips of his V-fins, they actually come up to quite about the top of his head. So that is pretty impressive. Right, so there's him. And then him standing up next real quick. I wanted to show this off since I'll be doing a bunch of the uh, wing kits. I wanted to show off the first wing kit I got and the first one that I reviewed. The wing Proto Zero next to the Death Scythe. So... Yep, fairly good, uh, fairly accurate proportions for size and size comparison between the two. All right, accessory time. We have um, real quick a little one to one hundred scale figure of Duo Maxwell standing up. Again, unpainted because I haven't gotten that far yet. We have the individual, or we have the swappable fingers. We do have um, two splayed open hands, the default fists, two gripping hands with uh, a tooth going in the middle of them, and then two gripping hands without the tooth. 
So there's that. Then there we have the action base connector, which a lot of these um, master grades end up coming with. So fairly decent connection if it's the same one as my Death Scythe Hell, because that's the one I currently have using the uh, action base. So it's fairly decent connection, nothing too impressive about it. Now we get on to his weapons. First off, we do have the Buster Shield. Just a fairly nice shield. It does look kind of uh, cool looking. It does. It does have a gimmick where this piece can open up. And if you've seen out of the anime, he does fire beams out of it. So, but real quick, I'm going to go ahead and slap this on the arm. It does have a peg, single rectangular peg that can peg into each either arm. But it's supposed to be on the left side, so I'll put it there. And we can pop that open. And then it comes with this beam effect piece, which is just a straight beam. And that actually pegs into the bottom of the buster shield. And then just form the uh, claw bits around it so it actually looks like it's firing it off. And then we have something like that. Just fairly nice, but it's not his signature weapon. We do have one more weapon to go over. Real quick, I'll get this out of the way. And of course, what Death Scythe would be complete, or would be incomplete, without the beam scythe and as you can see it's a pretty tall uh pretty long scythe at least the handle is fairly long it does stand that when uh the finger clip that i was going to use darn it oh nope that was the action base connector actually but yeah fairly fairly tall if i get this all the way out here in screen yeah that's how tall it is compared to the master grade so, and it also does come with a beam effect part for the scythe, and that just simply pegs into the emitter, like so. Now I, we've got a really impressive beam scythe, and uh, we'll go ahead and get him posed holding it. And if you've seen any of my other reviews with the uh, hands, all this will be very very repetitive but you go ahead and just uh, pull the hands off to the side and take the beam scythe I want to use the one with the teeth because with these grooves here in this side of the beam scythe handle it can fit in there and it does have a pretty solid connection into the hand or into the fingers at least but the fingers into the hand itself it does get a little weighted down and would come off occasionally if you jostle it and then with the uh, connect connection for the wrist it does get a little hampered what you can do so out cramping my leg and then finally real quick I do want to show off this little guy it's just nothing special it's just a little bit of a it's a connector is all it is because you come around here into the backpack which I didn't show off very much of because there's nothing really special with this backpack. It's just a nice backpack with thrusters on it and wings. So it doesn't really need that much specification. But all this thing is, is you come in here and you just slide it into that little groove right there in the back. Like so. And that is a connector piece for the beam scythe. So if you want to go ahead and take off the beam scythe, you can put it in there. And you can display Death Scythe not wielding his Death Scythe. Oops. Come on. Yeah. Just like that. Because everybody is going to pose their Death Scythe with his Beam Scythe on his backpack. But it's a nice inclusion that they added in. They didn't have to, but they did. So, bravo on Bandai's part for 
going that extra mile. Now, where did his fingers go? Uh -huh. All right, so there is the Death Scythe Master Grade. Very nice master grade. I do like him quite a bit. It's really nice. He does have a lot of, uh, going on for him. Uh, for size, he is a little bit smaller, but that's kind of given with the master grades for the wing series. So, if you're expecting him to be uh, Gundam 2.0 st uh, sized, you're highly mistaken, but... Overall, it is a very nice kit, a very fun kit. Um, I really did like building these wing kits, all six of them that I own. Yeah, all six of them that I own. And, um, well, seven if you count wing zero, but anyways. Yeah, I really do like the wing kits. Um, now, as you can see with the decals going on, it's definitely a version cut. Uh, Verka. It's not. It doesn't say that anywhere on the box or anything because I'm guessing they wanted to save uh, the Verka label for special releases. And seeing as all of the wing suits were going to be uh, version EW'd, it's nothing different than, or they just might as well give it that own special branding. And as you can see right here, this is one of my favorite decals: the Triple X G Zero One D that goes across his shoulder pad like that. I thought that turned out really nice for being a big dry transfer decal that had to go over multiple surfaces. Multiple curved surfaces, rather. But yeah, overall, very nice Master Grade. I do highly recommend uh, picking it up if you're into the wingsuits. Unfortunately, I don't think they'll ever come out with the Okawara designs, so... If you like the TV show design and you don't like this design, then you might have to... Uh, suck it up and buy this version if you really want a Death Scythe that bad. Because, yeah, don't quote me on it. I don't think that, but I don't really think that Bandai will ever make uh, the Okawara design wing kits. Because the first wing one came out, and like, like I said, the TV show Wing came out in like 2010, and this is coming up to 2016 now. So, yeah, overall, very fun kit. Do. I did enjoy the build on this. Now, as you saw, there is some pieces that like to pop off, especially in the uh, waist section area. And when I was building it, the uh, knees did not want, the knee guards did not want to act the way they were supposed to, but I got them to work after a little bit of fiddling. Anyways, I, I do recommend this kit. If you like Death Scythe, if you like the Gundam Wing uh, version EWs, I do recommend you pick this up. It's a very fun kit. Uh, just also I've noticed it is kind of basic in the in its uh, construction seeing as it's just Death Scythe now of course this does open up for upgrades as we all know he does get upgraded for later in the series and for the terms of these uh, suit designs endless waltz so we'll have that review coming up soon Anyways, this has been Ratchet Reviews. I hope you guys like this video review, and I will see you again next time.